Let's learn about Blender's built-in pose library system, and then make it even more powerful with the free pose thumbnails add-on. Be sure to stay to the end where I share best practices for creating and reusing poses. One of the best ways to speed up animation is to create reusable poses. Let's say we have our character rig. I'm going to go into the pose mode on the armature, and then in the properties window, I'm going to go over to the armature tab. You'll see that by default, Blender indeed has a pose library panel, which maybe you've overlooked before. If I go ahead and click new, it will have created a pose library for us. I can go ahead and rename this something like body. And then if I make sure I have all bones selected on my rig, I can press the plus icon and create a new pose. I'll call this by double clicking rest. Now I can go ahead and create another pose. Let's say that we move the body center up quite a bit, and then we're gonna move the legs out somewhat. Now, if I again select everything, I can press the plus icon, add new pose, noting that we have a few other options, but we're still gonna say new pose, and then double click, and I'll call this one jump. Now, when I go ahead and make sure I have everything selected once more, I can then use this magnifying glass to toggle between the two poses that I just created. It's important to note that this is based on your selection. So if I had only selected the body center, for instance, now when I go between these two poses, only the body middle is being affected. This also applies when you're creating the poses. So if you create a pose and you have only one bone selected, only that bone will be added to the pose library. It's worth knowing that in the back end, this is basically just an action, which is why when you click this drop down, you may see other actions in your file. You could actually go in and edit the action directly, but it's actually better to, if you need to update the poses, to use the options here. So for example, if I wanna update the location or orientation of the body center in this jump pose, I can go ahead and move it as desired. Then when I press plus, now I can use the replace existing, choose jump, and now it's replaced that bone. Again, based on the selection, you'll actually note when I use the update option, it doesn't remove the other parts of the pose. So I still keep the leg positions that I added before. If you wanna completely reset a pose, for example, if you wanna remove some of the bones that you had selected, that's where you can use the minus sign and then just kind of re-add the pose as necessary. I'm gonna undo that and again, make sure that I still have my pose here. And there we go. So this is all great and dandy, but what if we want to take it to the next step? You want to actually have not just all of your poses in one library, you want to actually be able to change between them because even with this little search bar, it can get to be pretty laborious if you have a ton of different actions or rather different poses set up. And that's where the pose thumbnails add-on comes in handy. It's essentially an add-on that extends the functionality of Blender's pose libraries, allowing you to both create thumbnails quickly for visualizing and selecting pre-made poses, but also letting you quickly switch between action libraries that are specifically relevant to your active rig. It also adds some great features like holding shift when applying a partial pose. And yes, it even works in a library linking environment. So to get the pose thumbnails add-on, you just need to go to the Blender Institute's repository on GitLab. I have a link in the description. It will specifically link to the releases page here. And then we're gonna download the pose thumbnails version. Uh, in this case, it's 2.2.0, but whatever is recent, it's gonna be the .zip file that says add on.zip. We're gonna download this and then make sure that it downloads as a zip file, rezip it up if it unzips it into a folder, for instance. And then in Blender, we're gonna to go to Edit, Preferences, then go into the Add-ons tab, make sure that Community is selected, and then press Install. We're gonna to navigate to wherever it downloaded, make sure that again, it's a .zip file, press Install Add-on, and then if necessary, we're gonna search for the Pose Thumbnail Add-on here, and then tick the box. If we expand the Preferences, you'll see a bunch of options here. We won't have to worry about too much, but just know that they're over here. Great, so how do we actually use this and what is this done? If we look at our pose library over here that we created before, you'll notice that we now have a new box. So far, nothing is appearing here. If you click here, it doesn't seem like anything's really happened uh, because we need to do a few things first. So firstly, I recommend always, always, always doing this. Make sure you add a fake user to your pose library. This will make sure that even if you ever switch away from that library, it stays saved to the blend file. Next, we're gonna click this little button here that has the question mark over the book. 
this essentially is gonna rename it so it matches the rig and the pose library expected conventions. You'll notice that it added PLB in front and then it has player body. So originally it was called body, it's now named it player based on the armature's name. So that's very important, that's how it's gonna recognize what the actual library is for. Now, again, you'll see nothing has happened here. Let's actually go ahead and create a new library. So if I click the copy icon here, really it's gonna create a new action library. Let's call this one faces, for instance. So I've named it faces. I'm gonna use this button again to very quickly, properly give it a name. And then in my viewport, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and completely reset my rig. So this is where I'm gonna get into some of the best practices, the best way to make poses so that they're very consistent and easy to use. We're gonna first go through creating the poses and then how to use them with library linking and all that good stuff. The first piece of advice is for every library, I recommend making sure that you start from a clean, neutral position so that you can replicate it, i.e. recreate the thumbnails later, and also making sure they get applied consistently. And so with this player faces, we're gonna be basically trying to create poses that are specifically facial expressions, let's say. You could have another library that's for the mouth positions. If you wanna do your lip syncing, you could have all of your mouth shapes already set up, for instance, which would be nice. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna do facial expressions. And so the first and very important thing, as we said before, the pose library is based on selections. So we actually wanna make sure we're consistently only selecting the face when we're creating the actual poses. So if you accidentally create a pose that included the body center, and then when you went to apply a pose, then your body is moved around, even though you're thinking you're just applying a surprise face, it's not very convenient for the animator. And so to help with this, we're actually gonna use another built-in add-on to Blender called Selection Set. So if you go to Preferences, go and search for Selection, you'll find that Bone Selection Sets is built into Blender, so you shouldn't have to download it. And this basically allows us to group bones into particular sets. So now you'll see that selection sets was added at the bottom here. I'm gonna actually drag it up so it's right next to our pose library. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and click and add new. I'm gonna rename this face by double clicking. And now I actually wanna make my selection. So I'm going into my front view here. I'm gonna just box select my face rig. I'm uh, being intentional of not selecting my head or my uh, head rotation controller over here because I really just want to make sure it's the facial expression. That's, that's uh, frightening. Uh, and then I'm going to click Assign. So now if I were to clear my selection with Alt-A or if I even select something else like the shoulder, now when I press Select over here, boop, it adds that to my selection. Again, noting it adds to your selection, doesn't replace it. So if I really want to make sure I'm only selecting the face rig, I'm gonna hit Alt A and then select the, or press select over here. Great, so now we have our facial expression. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is give a rest pose like before. So here I'm gonna go ahead and press the plus icon, new pose like we had before. You'll notice that this then makes the pose thumbnails kind of pop up as though we have the options, uh, but let's first just go ahead and um, give this a name. So not name, uh, not jump, but we wanna call this rest, let's say, rest for the face. Maybe let's actually call it face rest. Uh, and if we wanna add another one, let's say he want like a kind of a, a little bit of an angry pose. Uh, maybe he's kind of like glaring at you. Let's just move the eyes down a little bit here. Let's move the uh, face over here. I'm gonna rotate it and make it a little angry like that. Uh, so I've modified my selection. I'm gonna make sure I press Alt A. Going back down to selection sets, I'm gonna press select. So again, now I have exactly the same selection as before. I'm going to press plus, new pose, and then angry face, let's say. And I can keep doing that. So I'm only gonna do these two for now, but just to prove that's working, I am selecting these two poses. And maybe even to test this, I may move my object origin over here and select everything and then I'm gonna select between these two poses. This is a good way to make sure you didn't accidentally add other bones into your pose library, such as the root bone, because you really don't wanna do that. You don't wanna accidentally move your rig somewhere else in the world just because you're trying to apply some face if the uh, animator forgot to only select the face bones. Um, but indeed, we're, we're all set here, so that's looking fine. Uh, and now the next step is, how do we actually create our icons, our actual dropdowns for 
the poses themselves. So this is where the next best practice is make sure that you create a camera for each library. So right now we have the body as well as the faces. Under the faces, I'm gonna make sure I add a camera that is for this specifically. Uh, and while I realized it, uh, we didn't add the fake user for this new library. We should have done that right away. Again, make sure you add fake users for each of your pose libraries. Otherwise you could kind of lose your work. You don't want that. So I'm gonna exit out of pose mode. I'm going to add a camera. I'm gonna make that camera active. And then let's just kind of clear its location a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go in, uh, I'll use uh, tilde S to kind of move it around. And I'm gonna position it kind of around the face. Now our poses, uh, we want them to be square because it's gonna render best when we actually make the icons. So let's make this like 512 by 512. Doesn't need to be very high resolution. You could even do 255 or 256 by 256. Uh, it doesn't need to be specifically square. It just works better and there's no reason to make it ultra high resolution because it's just gonna you know, add lag for loading on your computer, all the icons. And now we have our camera. I'm gonna use F2 to name it. Let's call it poselib.face, so it matches our library name, so that way it's very clear what this camera is for. And now what we can do is if we turn off overlays, oops, sorry, if we turn off overlays over here, we can then go under view, and then we can use the viewport render image. This is the way we can actually generate our pose libraries very consistently. So I'm going to actually make sure I have exactly my original pose selected. So I'm going to, once again, as always, I'm going to select the face, and then I'm gonna apply, let's do the angry face first, let's say. Um, oops, that's the, the rest face, let's do the angry face. Um, so now I'm gonna to go toggle overlays, um, or toggle it there, then under view, viewport render image. It doesn't have to be a full render, it's nice and fast to do it this way. And now I wanna save it somewhere. So right now I have my blend file in this folder, so if I turn off the filters here, you'll see I have my char master. Um, so let's say that that is the file that I would link into other other scenes. Let's create a folder called pose lib icons. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, the main point is to make sure you put it consistently somewhere and that it's best if it's next to your source blend file. So in here, I'm going to, uh, let's say if we're creating all of our faces, then we'll have the convention of face and then I can uh, basically use the name that I have for the pose. Let's say I use angry face, because that is the way I named it in Blender. It doesn't actually have to match, uh, but it is helpful later as you'll find out. And so now in here, what I can do is I can go under here. Um, if I have the angry face selected and I expand the thumbnail creation tools, I can click add. And then I'm gonna go ahead and navigate and select the face that I just selected, or rather the image I just created. And so now you'll see I have my angry face and you may have to refresh if necessary, but now that's great. Uh, so we don't see the other facial, uh, the rest pose yet because we haven't created that. Uh, we can enable this option for all poses. So that way, if you haven't gone to creating the thumbnails for every single pose, you can still at least select them very quickly. And you'll see that I'm able to switch between them just like this. Uh, and that is uh, great. Um, but now we wanna add the, the next pose, of course. Um, so we've even already switched the facial expression, so we didn't have to go down here to use the magnifying glass. We can just use this pop-up here. I can go ahead and press view and then viewport render image, and then I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna follow the same naming convention. Again, consistency is key just to keep yourself from being confused. Um, the fact that I wrote face and then rest in one and then rest in the other is already kind of cons inconsistent, uh, but that's fine. And I'm gonna press save as render. And now this time, just to demonstrate that there's another way to do this in bulk, like let's say that we added yet another bunch of poses, uh, you can actually use the batch add and change. And so demonstrate, I'm just gonna create another pose really quickly. Uh, let's call it this one like, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh no, oh, an O face. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make sure I select only my face. Go ahead and press plus, add new, O face, I'll call it. Uh, and then we're going to turn off the viewport settings, render image. Now we're gonna save this. And this is face, again, cause that's our prefix for the library. And then O face. 
Uh, and yep, we're gonna go ahead and save that. So now what I can do is I now have three, if I press refresh here, I have three total poses, but only one of them has an actual image attached to it. What I can do is batch add slash change. So when I do this, I can basically go into my folder, select everything, and then I can use the name and then fuzziness. You can even turn the fuzziness over up to 1.0. Uh, maybe I'll uncheck override existing because I don't want to accidentally remap the the one I manually added to the pose. But this is basically going to search based on the name of the images to the names of the poses we have down here. Might not be perfect, uh, but it's a good way to save you a little bit of time if you were consistent in your naming. And so now we can see that the angry face and the face rest, and yep, they all match perfectly. So that actually saves us some time if we went through and made a bunch of poses, or if we ever had to map them or update the actual images into another location, for instance. So now how do we use this in an actual animation setting? How do we actually reuse the pose library? Because you put all this work into your master file, you don't want to have to redo this every time. So let's go ahead and save our file here. And again, doing the spot check that everything has been added as a fake user. Indeed it has, that's great. And we're going to go ahead and open up a new file. I'm going to delete the default cube as per custom. We're going to link in our collection because again, that's a, a good practice. You can append, but in this case, it's good to do linking. And then we go into our master file. And then here we're going to link the actual collection, which is our character called player. Now I'm going to just quickly proxy this guy, uh, player.arma. Now we have our proxy. And I'm going to quickly just uh, add some textures in here. And great. So if we were to go into pose mode now, we have our proxy. To, uh, this is the proxy of our character. Um, you can see that it's actually library linked in. So we can't actually even go into edit mode here because it's linked to our other file. Uh, but you'll note if we go under the armature tab and then the pose library, oh no, we only have uh, this one drop down item here. And uh, basically, it's not showing everything that we want. Um, so if I were to go into edit mode, or rather pose mode, um, you can see that we have the one library. Um, and it doesn't seem like everything is connecting through. Like it shows up blank, basically. So there's really a couple problems here. So first is when I proxied this object, it kind of renamed it. Uh, you'll see that it's called player underscore proxy. And if you recall, the way the pose library looks for actions is based on the name of the object, the name of the rig, really. And so the quick way to fix this is at the object level, I'm going to change it from player underscore proxy to be just player. And so now if I go into the library here, you'll see immediately that yes, indeed, it has detected our player body library, which is great. And so we see our two poses here, which is again, kind of what we wanted. And so we can actually apply, if I select everything here, we can use the magnifying glass here to apply the different poses, the jump and the rest pose that we created before. Uh, again, we don't see thumbnails because we didn't create thumbnails for this. But where is our other library? Well, again, behind the scenes, they're just actions and the actions weren't linked to the character. And so there's two ways you could solve this. The way I'll do real quick here is under file link. Again, we want to link in this case we can go in and actually link in the collection explicitly. If you had multiple libraries, you could just select A and select all the libraries you want to link in, but really we just need the faces now. And now that we have linked that in, we can see that it should appear in the drop down here. And indeed we get all of our pose libraries. And you notice I have all my bones selected. And so here I am able to select between my facial rig. If I go to my body poses, you'll see that I can apply the jump and the different poses here. Uh, but of course, when I created this library, I actually uh, did select the facial expressions, which maybe I shouldn't have. So now if I just select um, these ones, it would only apply uh, and not uh, affect the face basically. But yeah, and I believe the selection sets also comes through as well. So that's very useful. So if I'm in my animating scene, again, I can select my facial expression here again, I can switch to my faces library and then apply the right facial expression. So that's a very convenient workflow. And the other thing that's very helpful is also when you shift select. So if I have this pop up, I hold shift 
and then click down to confirm. So I'm holding shift, I click here. Now I have this sort of mix factor. So if I zoom in on my character, I can actually change how much of that pose I want to apply, which is super convenient. I can press enter at any level or just press the okay there uh, and it'll work just as I would expect. Pose libraries, both creating the poses as well as using them in practice. It definitely saves me a lot of time. The number of times that you recreate the same pose over and over in an animation scene is so quickly gained by setting up a library. And you can even take an existing animation you create where maybe you already made some of the facial expressions and the poses and then just kind of copy those into a library. Uh, again, make sure you're consistent. Have a camera for each of the pose library dropdowns that you're gonna have, and then make sure you set up selection sets. Uh, but then with that, you're gonna have a really nice way to speed up your animations and get to what actually matters. I hope this was helpful, and until next time.